Hey, this is Wileen Benson, and you are on the Daily Gratitude Call, where we start every day in gratitude. Gratitude is the highest energy state that we can be in. It creates a frequency of positive vibration that attracts positive experiences into our lives. Hey everybody, this is Wileen Benson. This is our daily gratitude call. Thank you for joining our call today. Um, today, uh, apparently we had a bunch of wind yesterday, no, day before yesterday, when uh, there was a fire behind my house and we had a super windy night um, or evening and it was really fanning the flames of that fire. And I believe the fire is out. We had a lot of rain yesterday. It was so wonderful to welcome that rain. It rained for about five hours and I think the fire is out. And so we're super grateful for that. And then um, today on our gratitude call as we were doing some rounds of gratitude before, just before we started the, um, the call, uh, several people mentioned that they were grateful for wind and the cool, refreshing weather and things like that. So I'm guessing that, um, well, not guessing because Kathy had said that there was a lot of wind that you know, even brought down some tree branches. So lots of wind um, up where she lives. And um, anyway, uh, and several other things that were mentioned, rain and, and some other things that just, and I can't remember who it was. I think it was Brittany maybe, or I can't remember who it was. No, it was Kathy that said, seeing God's hand like in the wind. And I thought how interesting that would be for us to um, focus today on gratitude for unseen evidence. Um, and wind is one of those things that you can't really see, but there's definitely some evidence in it. Um, I think uh, Phil mentioned cause and effects too would be, you know, possibly an unseen evidence. So anyway, we'll just see what that um, brings. So I'm going to set the timer for 90 seconds. We're going to do a private silent meditation on gratitude for unseen evidence. And uh, let's see, and just write down whatever comes to you and then we'll share. So gratitude for unseen evidence, 90 second private silent meditation um, begins now. All right. Um, you know, I, I'm really grateful for the things that I don't see. I'm, I'm grateful that I don't have to like be the one to fix everything, make sure everything is going the way that it's supposed to. Um, I think sometimes when we, uh, um, I know I used to really want to control everything and it was like, I had to know everything so that I could control it. And there's just a lot of um, stress <laughs> that goes along with that of, you know, having to really know what's going on so that I can somehow think that maybe I can control it. I don't know. That's like totally an illusion. 
but um, a thought came to me just an experience that I haven't thought of for a long time. It's probably been, I don't know, 20 years ago, at least when I was focused on a really big goal in, um, I used to be a Mary Kay consultant. Well, I am still a Mary Kay consultant, but I used to be um, active in it to the point that it was my full-time job and I was working towards becoming a director and earning my first car. And um, I was so focused on that and every day just speaking positive affirmations and all day long just focused, you know, bl blinders on, focused only on the positive and that this is possible and and everything. And that was the only way that I knew at the time how to manifest something was just to totally block everything out and just only focus on that and just be a hundred percent like driven to that goal. And um, I remember sitting at a lunch with some other Mary Kay women. And um, even these were all women who were in qualification to become a director or to earn their cars. And um, just sitting at a lunch and it turned negative and they were all talking about why they couldn't and you know what the problems were and everything and I just stood up in the middle of the lunch and I said I'm gonna leave because I can't afford to sit here and listen to this negative and of course they changed their tune they're like oh no stay and we'll we'll talk about something more positive and you know and it actually did turn into a really good conversation because you know, everybody was like, it was a pattern interrupt. Like who stands up in the middle of lunch <laughs> to leave? And um, uh, um, anyway, so the unseen evidence, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes around in our world that could totally throw us off kilter if we give it the time of day. But there's also just as much positive um, you know, really, uh, wonderful energetic things that are going on that we could give our attention to. And, um, and, and that's what I choose to do. So they're like unseen evidence of positive and negative out there. And I choose to give my attention to the unseen evidence that's positive. Um, Kathy and then Tyree love to hear what you guys have to say. Oh, goodness, I didn't even realize I was not muted. Oh, <laughs> do you have something? We can go to Tyree. I do, <laughs> you know, um, it was, it's just kind of interesting. One of the things that came up was about strings because um, this, this was new to me. It's like there was a, like 30 geese on this property and they were told to um, put strings up and the geese left just because they, had these strings and and so that, that was turned into an analogy of um oh, we it really is interesting but sometimes there are strings that you know we could get over them but we if we see them as obstacles we don't pass and, and like yesterday I was driving down the road and and they had blocked off with police tape the road where they were working on the electricity and so I had to choose, a, you know, one of two different paths to, to go clear way around out of my way to get past this, this roadblock and w where they were working on repairing the electricity. And there were so many people without electricity. And I thought sometimes there are things in the way and sometimes we see them, sometimes we don't. But what we, it, what we focus on and just finding a way to get past the obstacles and just um, knowing that there's a reason for them to be there. Sometimes it's important, sometimes it's not, but how we look at things and, and what God puts in our way to teach us different things. But was it's really interesting about um, just that, that was just really, I mean, I'm still formulating in my mind what, what things have been in my way to keep me from achieving what I want and what things are therefore reasons that I don't see, but wonderful. Wow. To... Yeah. I, I love that. I mean, the two things um, really are standing out to me. First of all, strings attached. And um, I was talking to one of our um, case study group participants and she was asking me about 
uh, Facebook groups and you know how some Facebook groups, when you join, they have like this list of questions that you have to check off, you know, before you're allowed to join. And she goes, what do you think about that? You know, should I put some questions or whatever? And I says, you know what? I never do because I, it's public group and it's open and you know, I can check that person out, you know, anybody that's um, asking you to join, I can go look at their Facebook page and everything. And if I'm concerned about them joining, then I can send them a private message. And, you know, so I, you know, my method is more about like connect with a person, see what the real uh, reason is that they want to join, you know, that group, if I'm really concerned. And I said, I've always felt like, you know, whenever I had this list of questions that I have to ask, it's almost like, you know, setting ground rules, like there's, there's rules and laws and everything. And it almost doesn't want, you know, makes me not want to join or I'm afraid that I'm going to say something wrong in the group or something. And so sometimes I choose not to join, you know, because of that. So that was one thing that I thought of is like when we put strings out there, you know, that there's strings attached to different things, then there's not total freedom. Um, the other thought that I had was, um, you know, you, like you mentioned about the police tape and the strings with the geese that, um, there's a perceived barrier. Like you could totally go through that tape. You could drive straight through it and it would not stop you. You could go, you could get out of your car and walk underneath it, you know, and the geese could have totally walked underneath the strings, I'm sure but there's this perceived barrier. And I think a lot of times our limiting beliefs or our excuses or whatever become these strings. It's like, Oh, there's a, there's a line across that, that I can't cross. Well, bull crap. <laughs> you can cross that line if you want to. So thank you. Um, let's see Tyree and then Laura. Okay, so my children are in this amazing music pro program called Let's Play Music, and they start teaching children music theory through, through games, and so it's music theory that most people don't learn till college, mm. and it's not like super in-depth and everything, but it's like the foundation for mm -hmm. music, and it's amazing, and I was listening to a podcast with Dr. Anders Erickson and he was saying how they found that perfect pitch can be, be developed by children from about either three to five or four to six or something like that. And how we thought that that wasn't a thing, but it is. And we're, we keep learning all these things that are possible that we thought that were not possible. Mm -hmm. And we find this unseen evidence, like my daughter who is nine, who is through the class, she can, she can sing harmony way better than I can. And she can hear a song and either she knows or she has to go find it on the piano and she can tell me what key it's in. And just, you know, light, she can transpose from, from like C to F or F to C and things like that, that I don't even fully understand. And the unseen evidence doesn't show up until they're a little bit older. But as we lay that foundation, then it gives us, it gives us those roots. And then faith, with faith, I was, you know, reading about faith yesterday. And we, there is so much power. Like the more that we work in faith and learn about faith, the more power and the more that we align ourselves with that, the more faith that we receive from God. Awesome. Wow. I love that. Um, you know, this, uh, idea of just the faith and, and putting, cause faith is evidence of things not seen. I mean, unseen evidence actually is faith. <laughs> I hadn't even connected those two. Um, absolutely true. And how awesome to have this, um, new understanding that if you just open the door to the impossible being possible, instead of thinking, oh, nobody's done that before, or that people don't usually do that, you know, don't really do that, or whatever, say, well, maybe it's possible. Even just saying maybe it's possible can allow us to um, get into that space where something would show up later, that cause and effect of, um, you know, something might show up later that we had thought in the past was impossible. I know um, back in the, I can't remember if it was the 30s or 40s, Somebody said, well, everything that's been invented is, has, or is uh, you know, everything that can be invented has been invented 
and they, you know, were thinking, we're just going to shut down the patent office. There's no more patents that could be made because everything has been invented. And how crazy is that? Thanks, um, Laura, and then Robert. Good morning. Good morning. Um, when I think about unseen evidence, I think about time because what we see or can't see is really dependent on time. So, you know, what I couldn't see in the past, I can see now. And there are things that I can, can't see today that I'll mm -hmm. be able to see tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so my, that, that makes me very blind. And yet I have my God. I have my relationship with God. And so I'm grateful that God is taking care of me, even in the times when I can't see what I need to see, or if I can't see him, mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. is my unseen evidence sometimes. And it's a comfort to know that when I feel alone, I'm not actually alone. And it's a joy to have new revelations of what I couldn't see before come into my view. And the analogy that came to mind is like losing my keys. If, if I lose my keys in the house and I find them, there's so, I have such joy. I'm like, oh, this is so wonderful. I have this joy because I found what had been lost. Um, but it's a joy I would never experience if I had never lost them. <laughs> mm. Mm. So, yeah. That's, that's really cool. Thank you. Um, Robert. So ultimately everything seen uh, somewhere shows up in different ways. Uh, ultimately the, when I talked about wind, it really reminded me of a story I'd heard back when I was about 30 years ago, close to 20 and they, talked about how um trying to speak above the whinny of the horse <laughs> <laughs> it sounds cool uh, <laughs> oh good uh how a, a farmer uh, if he had the choice <clears throat> to uh, create the perfect weather he described the perfect weather and he described everything except wind and wind is is may not be seen except for cause and effect but it is seen in that it also pollinates yeah and that is what we get to see through food production mm. trees i mean we see bees do it and, uh, and that's valid and butterflies and a number of insects pollinate but wind probably pollinates more than all those combined yeah I would say so and kind of goes back to that idea of cause and effect you know sometimes we can't see the things that are happening that are actually putting they're orchestrating all the things in place that will be working together in our favor you know even the scriptures say that all things work together for uh, the good of those who look to God or something I can't remember like fulfilling your purpose or something mm -hmm. and uh, yeah there's things going on that we can't see and I think that's where we get distracted when like what, what I was sharing about trying to control stuff you know it's I can't see it I need to see it I need to know that it's working well we can't and so there's where the, the stress and the frustration comes sure so, thanks Robert you're welcome uh, Bill what came to me was drugs um, drugs they go and they affect our body and they talk to our cells, especially like psychosis drugs and stuff like that. You know, a lot of people are on antidepressants and things like that. And then there's the thought process that also acts on our system. And scientists are baffled, you know, like, like how, why does it, you know, how does our thought process, you know, actually work like in a physical way? And, and it's interesting because we are creators. We are creators. That's what we do. We take what's non-physical and through our thoughts, we actually create physical and it acts and it's real. It's just as real as the, 
as you know, with a drug, it acts on you in a physical way and your mind acts on you in a, in a spiritual way. And yet both have cause and effect. And, and one um, can, um, can manifest itself uh, or, and will manifest itself, manifest itself in the physical form um, when, when given direction. And so I, that's just what came to my mind. So. Cool. Thank you. I, um, you know, I thought of the, um, placebos that, um, you know, it's interesting what you're saying, certain drugs, you know, they're meant to create a physical change inside your body. I mean, even just like taking a, you know, a headache, something for a headache, the physical evidence or the physical change that happens is the headache goes away, hopefully. Um, but there's kind of going back to, you know, like the strings and the police tape and stuff like that. There's, um, there can also become, we can have sort of like a, uh, our thought process around those medications. Um, you know, just when, if I, I don't take medication very often. And uh, when I do, it's usually because of a headache. Um, which I don't get very often, but there's this trust and faith in the, you know, whatever I'm taking that the headache is going to go away. And it's interesting because as soon as I take the medication, my attention goes completely away from the headache. The headache is still there because, you know, it hasn't had time to take effect yet, but I just like, okay, my headache's going away and I'll come back in my office or I'll go back to whatever I was doing and I completely forget about it. And I wonder, you know, just thinking about that placebo effect and like those imaginary, you know, barriers or whatever, if, if I had taken my attention off of the headache sooner, you know, would I have even needed the medication or, you know, is the medication more effective because I took my focus off of the headache? You know, that's kind of interesting to think. And then even like um, drugs that are used um, are abused. Uh, I know if someone is um, abusing a, a drug, then there's like a stigma around that. There's a lot of shame that's either put onto the person or that the person feels you know, within themselves if they are um, an, an addict. And I, I wonder if, that, if there's some effect you know, if that causes some effect to their, you know, ability to, um, to actually, you know, get control of that addiction or to have a different outcome. Yeah. Just something to, to, to consider. Can I just say one more thing? Uh -huh. Eventually everything is a vibration, everything. And, you know, the, most vibrations, well, maybe we, we see them, you know, in a physical form because that's how it manifests itself is, is in a physical form. But the vibration can be created in a spiritual way and it still manifests. And so it, it's interesting to think about it because because that's really what we're doing with our with our creative powers is we are the source, the radio broadcaster of the vibration. And then we don't see it but eventually it manifests itself mm -hmm. somewhere, either yeah. in us or around us. I love that. Um, Einstein said that imagination is more important than knowledge. And <clears throat> that's kind of that spiritual vibration that you're talking about when we really create that clear picture within our minds and, and put a lot of, you know, we speed up the vibration by putting enthusiasm and, you know, excitement and joy and, you know, all these emotions that we're going to feel, you know, when it's actually a physical thing, that's part of that creative process. You know, when we put something on our vision board and you're right, everything is a vibration. The um, desk that is, that I'm writing on is a vibration of energy. It's just a higher vibration of energy that the molecules are moving faster so that they're, or they're closer together, or I don't know, you know, I don't understand all the the um, science behind that, but it's just a different speed and density of vibration than the air. Otherwise we would be, you know, if they were the same vibration level, air would be solid also. It's, it's all the same. Thank you. Um, Deep tea. 
though I join the call in between, I think the topic of discussion is unseen evidence. And yes. what, what came to me is uh, intuition. Mm-hmm. Intuition is actually unseen evidence only if our ego and our mind do not come in between. And if we follow our intuition, even though we don't know, there's no reasoning behind it as though why we are doing it uh, and, uh, you know, why we are doing it. But if we just follow it, we just don't know the end destination. But it, you know, if you follow your intuition at the end of your life, you're going to be like, I live the life of uh, the wildest dreams. Mm -hmm. So I see intuition as unseen evidence only if we can distinguish like, uh, between our thoughts and intuition and actually follow our intuition. Yeah. Beautiful. So I see that as unseen evidence. Yes, absolutely. And I love what you're saying. There's no reasoning behind <laughs> intuition. And if you, if you'll just allow that to lead you instead of stopping it, I, I love that with the um, ego and the mind not coming in between the intuition and actually taking action on it then that unseen evidence of intuition can turn into something physical of living the life of your wildest dreams. I love that. Love that. Thank you. Yeah. Go Melinda and uh, Laura, did you have something else too? We'll go Melinda. And then if Laura has something else, then she can share too. Okay. This reminded me of um, something that I told my husband the other day. And he was just like, no, that's not true. But I told him, logic just doesn't make sense because I was trying <laughs> to explain why I was doing something. And he's like, but that's not that, that that's not even true. And I'm like, for me, it's true. Mm-hmm. Sometimes logic just does not make sense. And I have to go on intuition, like uh, Deep T was saying, because all of these things that a lot of these things that have been invented or done or achieved, everyone looks back and be like, wow, that's amazing because, you know, no one would have ever done that because Mm -hmm. it's not logical. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that's what this reminds me of. This unseen evidence is just going against that, that science of logic. Yeah. Um, I, um, I, I added the word God's logic doesn't make sense um, because yeah, it's, it's totally like that intuition, just following that and you never know where it's going to take. And it's, it's always something awesome. That's why we call them inspired shortcuts. <laughs> Thank you. Love that. Yeah. Laura, did you have something? Well, I think, um, I didn't, but, um, the fact that that was part of your intuition, I feel like I should probably say a little bit about what I've been thinking about. Everybody is wonderfully inspired comments. Um, one of the things that there's a thread here with this idea of seen and unseen in the science, in science, in the scientific, you know, community. And that is the observer effect. Um, I won't say too much mm. about it, but in quantum physics, we have the observer effect, which is, um, you know, and everybody can look that up. Okay. It's, there's all kinds of stuff on it, but, um, it's, uh, what we look at changes, what we look at changes. So when a scientist looks at a quantum particle, it changes and literally. And so they're like, huh, that it doesn't seem scientific. And Melinda, you're talking about logic. Well, logic is actually a construction in our, of how our minds work based on what we've already learned. So there is um so there's a certain extent to which our logic has to develop right and of course there's i think there's an there's an objective reality there's an objective truth to logic and to rationality but we don't always fully um embrace or understand it um uh, we don't fully know it so anyway with the observer effect um you know these these quantum particles would actually even pop in and out of existence they stop existing and then they start existing when they're interacting with another particle. And so the idea of seen and unseen, um, it's just pretty mind blowing when you get on that quantum level. So, um, something to, uh, think about and, um, 
and just really be maybe for me be grateful that the world is so much bigger and God is so smart. <laughs> yeah. So he's just so smart. He blows me away all the time. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, just, thank you. Yeah. I I do appreciate you sharing that and that, you know, really supports everything that we've been saying that even from the very beginning, what I was sharing about, you know, trying to feel like I had to have control over things. I would have to be God to be able to control everything because yeah. I don't, you know, I don't have knowledge of all of these scientific, you know, and the, the laws of physics and all those things. I don't have the knowledge of all of that. And when we try to control something, we try to control it based on what we already know. And that, you know, God's logic doesn't make sense to us because we don't have the knowledge of God. And when we start learning, you know, that's what we've discovered in the Lord's Way to Wealth Mastermind as we were um, going along our path and of discovery there of how to make money while you're, you know, living your life of purpose and uh, in, in the way that he would, you know, put his signature on. And we learned some of these things. In fact, Laura, you, you're the one who introduced us to this observer effect that um, helped us to find logic. Now it totally makes sense. Like it doesn't make sense, but it totally makes sense because we understand the observer effect. So, exactly. you know, adding those pieces of those bits and pieces of knowledge. Um, and that comes from being open, from taking down the police tape, taking down the strings, allowing everything to be open and saying everything is possible. I don't know. Let me ask this question and see what God can teach me, you know, see who can share some new information with me. So thank you. Well, um, it looks like Deepti has one, one more thought. Is that right? Yes. Uh, so these lines just came to me that if you stop applying logic or your mind getting in between. So the lines are the more you are okay with what is mm -hmm. the faster you are going to go. So the mm. more you control or something, you are going to like fall back. So the more you're okay with what is, the faster you are going to go. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, we are actually at the end of our time <laughs> today. This has been like the most amazing discussion. And so I really appreciate everything that has been shared. I, I want to just um, take us through a, a short uh, permission process. And so let's go ahead and do that. Just go ahead and take a deep breath. Just allow yourself to be in this space of taking all the strings down, <laughs> just allowing everything to be possible, allowing yourself to be open to receive from God any new information that's there for you. We've received lots of new information with these things that have been shared. Just so appreciate the understanding, the, the edification that we've received from each other, this mastermind that has um, just manifested itself today perfectly. And the first question I have for you is, what is the limiting belief that would stop you from allowing all things to be possible and from also being uh, allowing God to guide you, allowing intuition to guide you and not to let the ego mind come into, um, come in between that intuition and taking action. What is the limiting belief that would keep you bound when you really are free? And what's the cost of that limiting belief? If you hold on to that limiting belief, what is that going to, what's the effect? If the limiting belief is the cause, what is the effect of that limiting belief? And if you don't like that, you can give yourself permission right now to choose a new belief that will create a different outcome, a new belief based in faith, unseen evidence. And if you're ready to give yourself permission to choose a new belief, say yes. 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 Awesome. So what are those new beliefs? Two or three new beliefs that will, um, that maybe some things that some ahas that you've had today, you can incorporate those in these new beliefs, um, new beliefs that will allow you to experience the freedom, um, 
living the life of your wildest dreams, as Deep T said, uh, allowing the, the unseen evidence to take you wherever you choose to go. Just choose some new beliefs that will support you in that. And then as you're bringing those new beliefs into your awareness, just see those as unseen evidence. Put faith in these new beliefs that you thinking these things, bringing them into your heart and soul, becoming part of you, that this is unseen evidence that is going to create a completely different outcome for you. That the vibration has changed now, maybe up to a higher vibration than those limiting beliefs we're creating. And that you now are a different person because you're vibrating at a different level as you've brought these new beliefs into your, into your body, into your soul, into your mind and your heart. And with these new beliefs and operating at this higher vibration, what is the one most important thing you could do today to continue living in unseen evidence comfortably? peacefully, happily living in unseen evidence. What's the one most important thing you could do today? What's your inspired shortcut to being happy in unseen evidence, to accepting unseen evidence and loving it? We won't take the time to share today because we are at the end of our time. I do want to invite anybody that is um, either struggling with this or if this has opened up a whole new world to you and you're just like, I want some more of that. And you would love to um, talk to me about maybe some uh, the Lord's Way to Wealth Mastermind or some of these other things that I offer that... Um, will allow you to, to continue forward, quickly get into this new world that you're just experiencing today. Um, I would love to have a 15 minute conversation with you. And all you have to do is just go to askwileen.com and that will take you to my calendar and you can schedule a, a private free mentoring session and we can talk about whatever you feel like you would like more information on. So um, askwileen.com. Thank you all for everything that you've shared today. Um, this is one of those calls that you'll probably want to go back and listen to again. So watch for it to be posted on the Breakthrough with Gratitude Facebook group. Um, it's also in my website, wileenbenson.com slash blog. That will take you and has all the, you can actually search. There's a little search bar there that you can search keywords and it will bring up all the, um, uh, the past calls that have that subject. and. Um, yeah. So, uh, and it's also on all the popular podcasts. So please, you know, share this and re-listen to it. It's, um, this is a really, really big one for opening your mind and your heart to, to new things being experienced in your life. Love you guys. And we'll talk to you tomorrow at 7 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Thank you. Thank you. Love you, too. Thank you. Love you guys. Take Love care. You. Hey, thanks so much for listening. And I encourage you to tune in every day to the Daily Gratitude Call. And the Daily Gratitude Call happens live every weekday morning. I'd love to have you join. So to find out how to join live, go to my website, wileenbenson.com. Thanks for tuning in.